Hello students, how are you? Okay, fine. Already I have started the current electricity. In the current electricity, we will give the definition. Current is nothing but rate of law of the charges. There is a small correction while giving the definition for the charge in the first class. Charge is a fundamental quantity. After that I have explained regarding the atom and what the atom consists. So, actually that correction is done here. Charge is a fundamental quantity of matter due to which the electrical and other related effects are forms. Charge is a fundamental quantity associated with matter due to which electrical and other related effects are observed. That is a small correction. So, a small correction we have done here. So, last class we have derived the expression for drift velocity. Then the relation between the current and drift velocity. Then after that, there is a one more thing we have to be left there. Mobility of the electron. mobility of an electron. So we know that by the application of the electric field, the electrons are set under motion, they constitute the current. So when the electrons are under motion, they possess the drift velocity. The drift velocity is the result of what the potential difference is maintained across the ends of the conductor and the electric field is established inside the conductor, the drift velocity is the result of what? The electric field. When I establish the relationship between drift velocity and the electric field, the drift velocity is directly proportional to electric field. So, when I remove the proportionality sign, drift velocity is equals to proportional constant mu into E. Here, mu is nothing but the mobility of the electron. So, already we have the term mu. Mu is nothing but the refractiveness in the optics, but the same term is used here. To avoid the confusion, we take the prefix that is E, that is mu E. That mu is related to what? The mobility of electron. Hence, by rearranging the equation, we can write mobility of the electron is nothing but Vd by E. So, by seeing the equation, we can define the mobility of the electron, just by see the equation. The mobility of the electron is defined as the ratio of drift velocity to the applied electric field. It's the ratio of drift velocity to the applied electric field. And what is the assignment of this mobility of the electron? By reading this equation, the Drift velocity, that is nothing but velocity divided by the applied electric field, that is Vd by E. Velocity is measured in terms of meter per second. And electric field is nothing but volt per meter. So, we know that from the electrostatics, E equals to Ev by dx. E equals to dv is nothing but potential difference. Volt Ds is nothing but divided by meter over per meter. So, mobility of the electron meter per second, this volt when it comes to the numerator minus 1, m to the power of 1, this is nothing but mobility of the electron is nothing but meter square per second per meter. Now, this is the assignment of mobility of the electron. So what is the mobility of the electron? When you apply the potential difference across the ends of the conductor, the electric field is established inside the conductor, the electrons are made to bend in motion, they possess the drift velocity, then I establish the relation drift velocity and the electric field. The drift velocity is directly proportional to the electric field. When I remove the proportional design, Vd equals to proportional constant mu E that mu is nothing but mobility of the electron. I rearrange the equation. Mobility of the electron is equals to the ratio of the velocity to the upper limit. So, by using this equation, we come across the assignment of mobility of the electron. Velocity is measured in terms of meter per second. Electric field is measured in terms of volt per meter. From the electrostatics, the basic equation E equals to 
dv by dx, the potential difference is made in terms of volt, dx nothing but that is per meter, volt per meter. So I rearrange the equation, so meter per second as it is, when v comes a new meter minus 1, the power is nothing but minus 1, m to the power 1, now it is nothing but m into m, m square per second per meter. Now this is a sign of mobility of the electron. Then after this mobility of the electron, we come to the basic thing of the electrostatics. And what is that basic thing the sorry, current electricity? The basic thing in the current electricity is Ohm's law. Ohm is the name of the scientist. The complete name of the person is nothing but George Simon Ohm. Now he has established the relationship between potential difference and the current existed in the current during the year 1826. And that relation is termed as a Ohm's law. Ohm is the person that is George Simon Ohm. He established the relation between potential difference and current during their 1826. And that relation between the potential difference and current existing in the current is known as Ohm's law. Then he made the statement for that Ohm's law. If I take the conductor, or this is a conductor, and that is nothing but we can say that copper wire, if I maintain the potential difference across the ends of the wire, V is the potential difference. The lines of the conventional current is from positive to negative terminal of the battery. I won't go for the electronic current inside the conductor. So there is an electric field is established inside the conductor. That electric field established inside the conductor makes the electrons to be moved from one end of the another end of the conductor with velocity for so, V is the potential difference and there is a current flowing through the conductor is R. Then, he made the statement. The, according to Ohm's law statement, the current through the conductor is directly proportional to potential difference across the ends of the conductor provided temperature and other physical conditions are constant. What is the statement? The current flowing through the conductor is directly proportional to potential difference across the ends of the conductor, provided temperature and other physical conditions are constant. So, when you go for the statement analyzation, current through the conductor is directly proportional to potential difference across the ends of the conductor. What is the condition for that? Provided the temperature and other physical conditions are constant. Why these things are meant to be constant? Let's we go for analysis of that. So according to him, there is the existence of the current due to the application of the potential difference across the ends of the conductor. So first we apply the potential difference across the ends of the conductor, then there is the existence of the current inside the conductor. Then this equation can be rewritten as V is directly proportional to R. This is our basic thing. By the application of the potential difference, by maintaining the potential difference across the ends of the conductor, then there is the existence of the current. But the statement is provided, the current through the conductor is directly proportional to potential difference. So, by getting the current, we cannot apply the battery to the conductor. We cannot maintain the potential difference of the conductor. What is that basic thing? The potential difference is applied across the ends of the conductor, then there is the existence of what? The electric current. Then I rewrite the equation. According to the statement, this is our equation. I rewrite the basic thing. The basic thing requirement of the equation is that V is directly proportional to R. By maintaining the potential difference across ends of the conductor, there is the existence of the current in the cell. So, I will remove the proportional design. That proportional design is nothing but proportional constant into I. This proportional constant is nothing but R. That R is nothing but resistance of the conductor. Then the equation is written as V equals to R into R, generally V equals to R into R. So this is our Ohm's law. So one more extra term is added in the equation that is nothing but the proportional constant that is nothing but resistance. What is that resistance? The name itself indicates that resist means to oppose. 
Opposition for what? What are the things that are inside the conductor? Most of the electrons. The electrons are under motion because the conductor contains large number of free electrons. By the application of the battery connection, potential difference is maintained. The electric field is established. The electrons are set under motion. During the motion, there is a collision between the electrons and the ions inside the conductor. Due to that collision, there is a speed of the electron is going to be decreased. Due to that decrease in speed, again they are under motion. The process is continued. It means that during the motion of the electron, there is opposition offered for the flow of the electron. That opposition offered for the flow of the electron is nothing but resistance. That is nothing but resist to oppose for what? Motion of the electrons. By whom? The conductor. So, the resistance is nothing but opposition offered to the flow of electrons by the conductor during the motion. That resistance is the result of what? Collision. If the more collision, more resistance. Less collision, less resistance. No collision, no resistance. And that condition is nothing but what? Superconductor. In superconductors, the electrons are not going to get collapsed. They are going in a systematic manner by maintaining the certain distance between them. Hence, there will be no collision takes place. Hence, the resistance for the superconductor is zero. For other conductor, the resistance is existed for the conductor or every conductor has got its own resistance hence we can say that the resistance is depends on nature of the conductor its inherent property every conductor has got its own resistance now this r is the resistance of the, the resistance for the flow of the electrons by the conductor hence we can define the resistance from the equation i take down from v equals to r into r then r equals to v by r then how to define the resistance? The resistance is nothing but the resistance is the opposition for flow of electrons and it is defined as the ratio of potential difference across the of the conductor to the current flowing through the conductor. The resistance is defined as the ratio of potential difference across the of the conductor to the flow of current through the conductor. Then R equals V by I. Its assignment R is measured in terms of volt. Current is measured in terms of ampere. So R equals to volt per ampere. So both are both volt and ampere are name of the scientist. The detail work is done on the potential difference across the conductor, and there is a current flowing through the conductor, and one more term is existed that is nothing but the proportional constant R. The detail work is done. The relation between the potential difference and current is by ohm. He replaced his name and the unit is ohm. Now it is symbolically represented by electrical symbol. This is nothing but ohm. The assignment of the resistance is ohm. Now this is not symbol. Now generally, this symbol is arised. There is certain meaning for that symbol. We know that. While moving on the road, we have got the road box. But these are the road bumps. When you take the vehicle on the road, whenever we come across the road bump, your speed is going to, you are going to reduce your speed of the vehicle. Now these road bumps are nothing but opposition for your motion of the vehicle. Now I cut this term. This figure. This is the meaning. Now this is nothing but what? The opposition of that opposition offered by the conductor to the flow of electron, that is nothing but resistance. I take the symbol, now this is nothing but the resistance, that is the assignment of the resistance is one, the symbol can be represented like this. Now this is nothing but symbol for O. So, after getting the term resistance, the resistance depends on what factor. Every conductor has got its own resistance. Because of that resistance, they are going to be classified. The good conductor, bad conductors, again we are going to come across one more term, semiconductors. So, the resistance depends on which factor? The factors on which resistance of the conductor depends. Factors on which the resistance of the conductor depends. Factor 
factors of which the resistance of the conductor depends. So I take the conductor. Now this is the conductor. And simply we can say that wire, we can take copper wire or aluminum wire, it has both of its own length, L, and A is the cross section. So, the resistance of the conductor, every conductor has got its own resistance, the resistance of the conductor depends on what? Dimensions. It depends on length and it also depends on what? Cross section area. So, the resistance of the conductor depends on dimensions of the conductor. And this resistance of the conductor depends on what? Temperature. R depends on temperature. So, how the temperature related to the resistance of the conductor? Practically, it is related. It is observed that the resistance and the temperatures are factors for the conductor. In the case of semiconductors and insulators, the relation between the resistance and temperature are inversely proportional. So, we are dealing the conductor, the relation between the resistance and temperatures are parity proportional. So, the resistance of the conductor depends on dimensions of the conductor, second temperature of the conductor, and third one, nature of the material. Nature of the material. Now, this water is sold by Aluminum has got its own resistance, copper has got its own resistance, silver has got its own resistance, gold has got its own resistance. So it depends on nature of the material. Now these are the factors on which the resistance of the conductor depends. The resistance of the conductor depends on dimensions of the conductor, the resistance of the conductor depends on temperature, the resistance of the conductor depends on nature of the material. The later on we have come across the relation between resistance and temperature that is nothing but temperature person of a resistance of a conductor. Next, class, we talk So, I want to give the expression for resistance of the conductor in terms of its dimension. The resistance of the conductor depends on what? Dimensions are already told. So, if I say that someone else, you take the wire from the market, you go, and market, go to the market and bring the wire. And the person asks that, sir, what is the length of the wire? Shall I bring 1 meter, 2 meter or 3 meter? The next is question that, shall I bring the thin wire or thick wire? And after that you never, goes, uh, never go past anything. Just when you give the dimension, you bring the 2 meter wire and a little bit thicker. So, the first question, to bring the wire, how much length? Then, thin or thick, that nothing but its cross section length. Now I take the resistance of the conductor, this is R factor. How this resistance of the conductor depends on these things. Then what is the relation between the resistance and the length of the conductor? What is the relation between resistance and cross section of the conductor? By keeping either of the one factor constant, I go for analyzing what is the relation between the resistance and length of the conductor by keeping cross section area constant. When you go for the several experimental evidence, we come to know that the resistance of the conductor is directly proportional to length of the conductor provided the cross section area and the remaining condition, that is other conditions constant. The next one, by keeping the length constant, if I go, go on varying the cross section area, then what is the relation between the resistance and cross section area of the conductor? The resistance is inversely proportional to cross section area. By keeping the length and other physical conditions are okay, constant. So, when I merge both the terms here, the resistance of the conductor is directly proportional to length and inversely proportional to cross section area. What is the relation to the established here? The resistance of the conductor is directly proportional to length of the conductor and inversely proportional to its cross section area. Then, R equals to proportional constant L by A per year then. Constant is nothing but resistivity rate, or this is known as resistivity. Resist means to oppose, resistivity, opposing capacity. 
How extent the conductor make the electrons to be opposed? That measures its what? Resistivity generally. Resisting capacity, that is nothing but opposing capacity. By whom? The conductor. So it is called resistivity. Then I can make the equation R equals to rho n by k. If I frame the equation for resistivity, rho equals to R k divided by n. Now well, this is nothing but the resistance of the conductor. Then what is its assignment? So your R is present in terms of ohm. Here is present in terms of meter square. And length is nothing but in meter. Then rho equals to ohm. One meter is got cancelled. Ohm meter is represented by simply ohm. The assignment of resistivity is ohm. So, by seeing this equation, on which factor the resistivity of a conductor depends. So, from the equation, R is directly proportional to rho is directly proportional to A, rho is inversely proportional to A. If I change the length and cross section area, there is a change in resistivity. Practically, the resistivity is independent of dimensions. Sometimes equation forces. Just by the just by seeing the equation, someone is going to say that if I increase the area two times, there is an increase of the resistivity two times. If I decrease the length by original length, there is a change in resistivity which takes place. The resistivity does not depend on the dimensions of the conductors. We don't go according to that equations by Dynamic proportionality area and universal proportionality length, sometimes equation forces. There is the terms are existing in the equation, but the resistivity does not depend on the dimensions. If you go on saying the same thing for the sort, then never going to be understood. So the terms are there. A is there, L is there by changing the A and L, there is a change in rotation. Then why are we going to keep A and L? But the original equation for resistivity is entirely different. Then you come across that same equation in the conductivity terms. So, the resistivity does not depend on the dimensions of the conductor, but depends on the nature of the conductor and right? temperature. The resistivity depends on the nature of the conductor and the temperature. According to that equation, they were able to respond to the that. So, rho is directly proportional to it. And rho is inversely proportional to m. By changing a and m, there is a change in rho. The equation, the terms are there, but the resistivity is independent of the dimensions of the conductor. Then we come across the equation. That should be cleared in the record. So, the SRM of resistivity is ohmometers. Then I come across one more term. The resistivity is nothing but. The resistance is nothing but opposition for flow of the charges by the conductor. There is an anti term, opposition. Another opposite term is nothing but turn off. Then what is that allowing? That is nothing but conductance. Resistance. The opposite term is nothing but, one more term is nothing but conductance. It is represented by G. So, opposite for resistance is nothing but conductance. Then I make the relation G equals to 1 by reciprocal of the resistance is nothing but conductance. Reciprocal of the resistance is nothing but conductance. The conductor opposes the flow of electron. Conductor, conductance, the electron should be made allowed to be passed by. So, opposition for that is the reciprocal of resistance is nothing but conductance. G equals to 1 by R and its assignment 1 by Ohm per ohm. It should be spelled back more. And it is also termed as sign. The complete name of the scientist is George Simon Ohm. Ohm. Then you come across back sign. No. The assignment of conductors is per ohm more or sign. The reciprocal resistance is correct. Now, this is one more. Once again, switch over to myself to the resistor. 
I want to define a resistivity. So, by keeping the equation rho equals to R A divided by L, I keep the equation rho equals to R A divided by L. Then, rho equals to R when A equals to 1 meter square and length equals to 1 meter. I can put on here. Rho equals to R. When A equals to, the cross section of the conductor is 1 meter square and the length of the conductor is 1 meter. When both the terms are 1, then remember, you go for yourself in the first place, you see, that is nothing but specific. So, in the case of specific heat, you use the term by raising the temperature of 1, 1 Kelvin by raising the temperature of 1 Kelvin and there is a term Q is directly proportional to there are the certain equations we are going to be following in the thermodynamics that is nothing but production of the heat so when both are 1 we use the term specific so the resistivity is numerically equal to the resistance of the conductor when the cross section of the conductor is 1 meter and its length is the cross section of the conductor is 1 meter square and its length is 1 meter then the resistance of the conductor is numerically equal to resistivity and this is known as specific resistance the resistivity is also known as specific resistance the resistivity is numerically equal to the resistance of that conductor whose cross section area is 1 meter square and length is 1 meter and that resistivity is also known as specific resistance. This complete term is what I want, particular we are having the specific, specific resistance. Area is 1 meter square, length is 1 meter, both are spec particular, specific, hence the specific resistance. Resistivity is numerically equal to resistance of that conductor whose cross section area is 1 meter square length is 1 meter. So, this is our definition for resistivity and the resistivity is also known as specific resistance. So, after having this resistivity, we go for one more term related to resistivity that is nothing but conductivity. That is nothing but sigma. Resistance the opposing term is nothing but conductance. Resistivity, the opposing term is nothing but opposite term is nothing but conductivity. So conductivity reciprocal of resistivity. So reciprocal of resistivity is called conductivity. Then what is the assignment? We know that the resistivity is having the unit ohmmeter. I take both the terms numerator per ohm per meter. Per ohm is spread as a reverse mo per meter. Mo is nothing but sin by sin by right? Now this is our conductivity. Conductivity is nothing but the reciprocal. Resistivity, sigma equals to 1 by rho, then the SIM for resistivity is ohmmeter, meter, I take to the numerator per ohm per meter, per ohm is written as mo per meter, mo is also nothing but like Simon per meter, but this is nothing but our conductor. Now we have got the terms resistivity, conductivity, resistance, conductance. And one more term that is the basic term we have studied here for the ohms resistance. So, there is one more representation of Ohm's law that is nothing but microscopic form of Ohm's law or equivalent form of Ohm's law. Ohm's law. Ohm's law. Ohm's law equivalent form. Or microscopic form of Ohm's law. 
I take V cosine bar. Now this is the one method. There is only one method. We bore it. I take the basic equation V equals to I bar. Now this is nothing but our Ohm's law. But we know that R equals to rho L by A. What is the relation between the resistance and dimension of the conductor? R is directly proportional to L and R is inversely proportional to A. The proportional constant is known, that is called resistivity. I replace it. Then rearrange the, I arrange the equation in a systematic manner. Shall I write V by L, I by A, and this is rho circuit. I want to give a certain meaning for the terms. So to give the meaning for the terms, I make the separation of the terms. I write them in systematic form. Now V by L, now this is the thing but what? From the electrostatics, E equals to D by dS. Potential gradient. That D by dS is nothing but shall I potential difference is nothing but V. dS is nothing but FN. Shall I write V by L? And the current density is defined as current flowing through the conductor per unit area. Shall I replace the terms? V by L is nothing but E and I by E is nothing but J. So this is nothing but E. J into rho. Right? So J equals to shall I write E by rho or E into 1 by rho. I have not said it. The reciprocal of resistivity is called conductor. So J equals to sigma into J is the current density. Sigma is the conductivity. P is nothing but electric field. J equals sigma into this is nothing but another form of Ohm's law. So Ohm's law can be represented the first one, E equals to I into another form of the Ohm's law, J equals to sigma into E. Now it is in the third one. So while studying the current density, current is a scalar quantity, but current density is a vector quantity you have told it. Then what is the direction for the current density? The current density takes the direction of the electric field. What is the direction of the electric field? The direction of the electric field along the direction of the conversion current that is nothing but from positive to negative. J equals to sigma into V, it is a vector quantity. The direction of the current density is along the direction of the electric field. What is the direction of the electric field? The direction of the electric field is from positive to negative. So, the current density is a vector point, its direction is along the direction of the electric field that from positive to negative terminal. Now, this is about our current density. J and sigma A, this is the relation between the current density sigma and A, and this relation is also known as another form of the Ohm's law that is equivalent form of Ohm's law. Now this is one method to get equivalent form of Ohm's law. Just with glass equation. Everything will be there. The only thing is that while writing the equivalent form of Ohm's law, you take the basic equation V equals to I to R. We know that from the dependent factor of the resistance on the dimensions of the conductor, we go for R equals to L by A. Substitute the terms make the systematic arrangement and give the meaningful term for them E equals to J into rho rho is nothing but the resistivity if I take the resistivity uh, in the denominator factor towards E E equals E into 1 by rho 1 by rho is nothing but conductivity J equals to sigma into E or this is equivalent form of Ohm's then now one more method to derive the equivalent form of Ohm's law now this is our method by taking the Ohm's law itself then I go for one more method. I take the basic equation current in terms of drift velocity. I have given the hint for how to remember the equation. Naively. That is the kind of meaning. Already we have derived the equation. That equation to be instant, I want to be. S and is the equation current in terms of drift velocity. I take the help of that hint naively, NAE into V. 
zero dot by hundred int. Then you move for directly writing the things and you know, how long you are going to write in the things some more. We want to be easily recall, easily recall them by knowing the term, the current relation between current and drift velocity, i equals to any to b. We know that the drift velocity, there will be no need of writing the term. Velocity comes under what? Acceleration. Acceleration comes under what? Force. We know that V equals to U plus A to original equation. Then velocity is nothing but acceleration into time. Which time? Relaxation time. When the electrons are under in motion under the application of the electric uh, by maintaining the potential difference and the establishment of the electric field inside the conductor, there is a one more term, the drift velocity associated with what? One more term. That is nothing but the relaxation time. We have studied earlier class. So acceleration, force by mass into tau. So force, we are dealing with electro, that is nothing but current electricity. We go for the term related to the charge. I take the help of electrostatics. E equals to F by Q, I already know that. E equals to F by Q, F equals to E into Q. Q is nothing but the electron. I am taking the magnitude, that is I neglect the negative side. E into E, tau divided by F. F equals to E into E. F equals to E into Q. Q is replaced by charge of the electron. So negative I neglect the negative sign. I am dealing the magnitude that is positive E into tau divided by F. I write this way. I equals to M A E. E into E tau divided by M. Then I make the arrangement. I by D. M E square tau divided by M. I place E separate. Then this equation here T is replaced by tau, that is a relaxation time. Then A is replaced by force by Newton second by F by M. F is nothing but E equals to F by Q, F equals to E into Q. Let me write here. Don't confuse. E equals to F by Q, F equals to E into Q. Q is nothing but the electron. The electron is negative nature. I neglect that negative sign because I am dealing with magnitude. So, we will be tau divided by m. I replace that VD by the equation. So, I make the arrangement systematic arrangement, I by A. This I by E is nothing but current density. N is the number of electrons. E is the charge of the electron. Tau is the relaxation time. M is the mass. So, these complete terms are nothing but the constant. Now, this is nothing but our resistivity. Rho equals to M e square tau divided by M. Right? Then, J equals to J, that is nothing but, right? J equals to rho, that is nothing but, this is nothing but, sorry. Kind of. This is nothing but, 1 by Number is nothing but here, conductivity, conductivity is nothing but in this So J is to sigma. Is it clear? All the terms are going to be here. So this complete term is nothing but conductivity, that is nothing but 1 by rho, that 1 by rho is that is the reciprocal of this is nothing but conductivity. Then I go for derivation of this equation conductivity. Just now this is our representation of what? Ohm's for the other form. You take V equals pi into R form or this that is left. Shall I go for conductivity? Expression for conductivity. 
expression for conductor. Expression for conductivity. All the equations are simple. Only thing is that you have to be constant. To have the conductor to near the resistance. To have the resistor to near the resistance. The resistance offers when the motion of the electron takes place inside the conductor. I take the circuit diagram. Now this is my circuit diagram. I take the conductor. Now this is my circuit diagram. V is the potential difference. I is the current. The electrons are moving inside the conductor with their velocity VD and electric field is established inside the conductor. Now this is our cross section A and L. Then I want to establish the equation for conductivity. Now the potential difference is maintained across ends of the conductor. The electrons are moving inside the conductor under the effect of electric field with the drift velocity VD and they are covering the denter and crossing the cross section area A and I is the current exists in the circuit. So, I take the equation, the relation between current and drift velocity, just a constant and the figure. How the relation is what we derive just by seeing the figure only, we come across the one by one side. The figure itself reveals all the terms to be required for the derivation, just you have to be constant. The relation between current and drift velocity. Already comes I plus nine and right? Then drift velocity, but V D equals to velocity equals to acceleration into time, into acceleration equals to force by mass F by m into tau. So force is nothing but electrostatic concept E equals F by Q. F equals to E into Q. Q is nothing but electron. E into E tau divided by M. Instantaneously have to be through the equation. This is a three mass equation separately, but you don't have the terms. Just goes on concentrating them. Velocity comes under in what? Acceleration. What is the relation? What is the definition for acceleration? Rate of change of velocity. Acceleration equals to rate of change of velocity. Velocity equals to acceleration into time. So A equals to F by M. Newton second law. T is nothing but F tau. Relaxation time. Now F equals to a into Q, Q is nothing but the electron, negative sign is directed, A into E, tau divided by M, I replace it. I plus E, N A E into D, E E, tau divided by M. 70% of the derivation is same as that of what? Earlier derivation, equivalent form of Ohm's law, a small slight change. I by A, N, E into E, E square, tau divided by M, into E. I by A is nothing but what? J. Alright here. I by is nothing but J N E square tau divided by M into A subject. Right? Now this much of the things we have done there. What is that small change here? So I want to replace this J. J equals to I by A. I already have studied. Then one more equation for J. J equals to, but already according to the current form of Ohm's law, J equals to sigma into E. Shall I take it? Shall I take J equals to sigma into E? Then I replace this J by sigma into E. This is our final equation. E get cancels. What is the final term remaining? Sigma equals to A n into E square term divided by yeah. So this is our equation for conductivity. Easy to equation. So just to concentrate on the figure. The figure reveals almost all the things. Just what is the relation between current and velocity? I equals to A n into V d. Then I want to substitute this V d. V d equals nothing but velocity equals to Acceleration into time, that velocity is nothing but velocity. So, acceleration is replaced by force by mass into tau. Force is nothing but from the electrostatics. F equals to into Q. Q is replaced by charge electron, charge of the electron E. 
that is in the total divided by we have negative the negative sign because we are dealing with magnitude concept. I post to NA, I substitute the term of VD in the original equation. I call this is equation of one. So NA in the total divided by I make the systematic arrangement I by A equals to N a into e square term divided by m into e. Now this complete term i by a gives what? j. j equals to that is current density n e square term divided by m into e. Then from equivalent form of Ohm's law, we know that j equals to sigma into e and replace the j by sigma into e. e e cancels the final term sigma equals to n e square term divided by m. Now this is an expression for current term. Is it clear? Yes. So already we have said that resistivity is independent of dimensions of the conductor. I got the equation for conductivity by using this equation. I clear the concept of how it, how it does not depend on what dimension of the conductor. Is it clear? Shall I know all the factors? Yes. Yes. Let R equals to rho L by A. Rho equals to R A divided by L. By keeping this equation, if I say that the resistivity is independent of dimensions, again you are going to be concentrating the equations. So rho depends on A, rho is inversely proportional. Why can you say that, sir? By changing the A and the L, why not? There will be a change in the resistivity test space. Of course, there must be a change in the resistivity, but you are not you are telling that it is independent of dimensions. But the original equation, what we have studied. That is nothing but sigma equals to n e square tau divided by m. This is our basic equation. Then what is conductivity? Conductivity is nothing but reciprocal of resistivity. Alright. Sigma equals to 1 by rho. Then rho equals to what? m divided by n e square. This is our basic equation. This is our octet equation experiment tell you. What is the relation between the resistance and dimension of the conductor? Experimentally, we have found the equation for resistance, then we come across a concept of resistivity. But here, the original equation for resistivity is m divided by n square plus. n square into term. Do you find any L and A here? Hence, the resistivity is independent of dimensions. It depends on which of the material, temperature, and it is independent of dimension of the conductor. From this equation, we can convince you that resistivity is independent of dimension of the derived the conductivity. If I come across here, you are easy to understand. So, from this equation, we never will be able to rho belongs to A and M. But rho is independent of dimension. This is our modern equation for rho. That is the M divided by M is the term. Now, this is the term related to. Resistivity, conductivity, conductance, resistance, etc. In the while giving the Ohm's law. Now these are the derivations we have done here. The next class we come across what the color coding of the resistance.